There it is. There it is. Are we live? We are live. Oh, we are not live on, on, there we go. Now we're live. Now we're live on Instagram. We're live on Facebook. I don't know if Matt G gets a, let's see, I think Matt G gets a, give us a, give us a second, folks. Matt G will be live with us in a minute. This is the Flip King CEO podcast, shooting live. We're going to have a good, good friend of mine, Matt Garabedian, joining us all the way from the West Coast. Today you get East Coast and West Coast live in full effect. And Matt G, my friend, my good friend in the DM family, is one of our masterminds. Been, uh, been friends with Matt here for, uh, for a little, going over a year and a half now, maybe two years. Really good buddy of mine is going to be joining us and answering a lot of high-level questions about how people, the power of people, how you can regulate and uh, multiply the power of people and uh, what it does for your business. And uh, if you guys give me one second here, to see if we can't find a way to add Matt G to the program. I think he already got the uh, he already got the invite. So give Matt G a second. So. Um, as you guys know, we're taping the podcast live. The recordings are available on iTunes. Um, they've already started being populated there. For those of you that are just checking in, as a reminder, if you go to the podcast in iTunes and you're starting to listen to the podcast, I appreciate getting a lot of feedback through Facebook and the messages and getting people that are texting me and calling me during conversation and saying, hey, we appreciate the content, appreciate what you're doing, listening to the old podcasts. Guys, I've been doing these now for almost two and a half years, and a lot of you are listening to the ones that I recorded two, two years ago. I was having a conversation actually this morning in this office about a, a podcast that I did almost, almost two, like two and a half years ago, um, brought back some old memories. Um, listen, if you like the stuff, if you think it's great value, and you like the content that I'm putting out, do me a favor, go to the iTunes, uh, go, to, go to the iTunes podcast, Matt wants to join, leave a five-star review, leave a comment about a five-star review and then put in the comments wherever you're listening whether it be an instagram or facebook put in the comments five-star review and amanda who's over here say hi amanda hi amanda will send you something cool and it's happened multiple times now all the people who put five-star reviews on itunes and then came here and put five-star review below are starting to get cool stuff there's my man matt g say what up what up guys how are you guys doing today Thanks for joining us, Matt. Appreciate you. Yep. Matt, why, can you give the, uh, give the folks that are, that are listening live on Facebook right now, can you give them a little bit of background about where you've been and what you do? Sure, sure. I'm a uh, real estate investor. I'm based in Fresno, California. My company primarily wholesales. We wholesale deals. We do some fix and flip. But, you know, we look at the best strategy for any particular deal we bring in and, and, and take that route. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, you're, you're, you're selling yourself short, Matt. Matt's a, Matt's a big-time wholesaler out there. Matt's a, uh, an automated CEO. Um, Matt's come a long way, especially uh, since I've known Matt. We've both come a long way, frankly. I mean, we've, we've both done a lot of things in our businesses in the last couple of years. Matt, Matt's also a broker, right? Own a brokerage, owns a brokerage currently, right? A lot of automated systems in place. Correct. And uh, have both taken that CEO jump uh, big time in the last 18 months to two years, Matt. I'm um, starting to put some great pieces in place uh, to make that transition to where, Matt, you're almost 100% out of it, right? You actually just had your COO at the same event that I had my COO at last uh, last week in Florida, right? Correct, yeah. Um, just being in the group with, with guys like yourself that have really stretched and, and helped me grow my mindset, it's all kind of been coming together. And uh, now I'm excited to just start looking at how we all talk about, like, how do we work on our business and not in our business. And when you first hear that, it doesn't really resonate with you. But when you start seeing guys that you consistently network with and mastermind with, start doing it and the pieces they put in place, it's a game changer, right? Because we, we start looking at our business as a business owner and not a, a high paid paid job. Dude, 100%. I think when people think that they hear that cliche, like the term like work on your business, not in your business, they think like that means that I'm not going to work anymore. Like I'm on my business. So now it's just, I get to go play games all day, not work anymore because I don't have to be in my business working. Right. But it's just, it's, it's just a different, completely different mindset of I'm not in the grind every day, but I have to start figuring out ways 
to do things that are on my business, it's still work, right? In fact, it's probably more difficult to a certain extent to stay away and come up with high level challenges to, to find for ourselves, but not be in the day to day, right? Not be in the day to day grind, right? Work on the business. Well, that's like, you know, we're naturally wanting to be in the business, right? That's how we, we, we do it. Yeah. We, we, uh, we look at something, we want to immediately put our hands into it, mess it up, you know, try to, try to put that Superman effect that we, we talk about where, hey, I can handle this problem. Hey, I can handle this deal. Let me go out and get the contract signed. Let me go out and find the buyer. And, you know, it, that works to an extent. You know, we, we've all kind of built our businesses to a point where, yeah, we, we, we kind of built it on our own brute force, really. But at some point when you start looking at how do I grow this past this certain level, then we got to start thinking about how do we start thinking as a CEO. And the way a CEO thinks, Joe, as you know, you've done a remarkable job. And, you know, I always try to look at what you've got going on and model my business. We look at how do we start training and hiring and, and recruiting talent to, to teach them how we've run the business, give them certain roles and responsibilities. And then ideally we have our CEO, our COO come in and manage those people while we're on top of the, you know, quote unquote, you know, business looking down and, and, and seeing how we can improve in certain areas. So definitely it's just a, it's a mindset shift that that's exactly what it is. Dude, hundred percent. And I appreciate those words. You know, the thing is like when you have a company, I always say this, like, you know, I, I can do or have done almost everything that every one of my employees does today. Right. Like we, cause that's like you said, we started at the bottom. That's where we, we worked our way through If We actually enjoy it. That's what we've done. Right. But the fact is once this company gets to a certain level, they absolutely have to have a visionary. They have to have a person that points to the direction and says, this is where we're going. They have to have a leader. So if you're still in the day to day and you're the person doing the thing, then who's going to be the visionary, right? So now there's a new position that's been built and someone has to run it. Someone has to own it. Someone has to be it. So if you're not in it doing it, then, then all the people that are actually doing the day to day operations are looking up and they're saying, who's up there? Cause there's no one up there at the top, right? There's right. no one up there looking at it. Right. So, so, right. Yeah, man, exactly. it's, it's an interesting concept. Well, it's funny because, you know, I, I've been able to, I actually just had lunch before we were able to, to, to sit here and chat. And I had lunch with a guy locally that for many years I thought was like, man, this guy is doing deals. He's got it together. Um, I wonder how many deals he's doing. Uh, it seems like, you know, he, he does flips and his flips turn out to be like really nice. And, and he does a really great job. But, you know, when sitting there and I'm talking to him, I'm just, you know, we're having a casual conversation and he's telling me about how, you know, he's right, actually still handwriting his yellow letters. And this guy's been in the business five or six years. And I said, oh, my goodness, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, that's one of the first things I learned quickly is like, dude, we've got to figure out like what you're not good at or what is like a not what's like what is a what is not a money making activity? Certainly sitting with a yellow pad and paper, like, okay, listen, if you're starting out in the business, like I recommend you doing that and, and figuring that out. But certainly one year, six months, two, certainly two years, let alone five years later, if you're still writing your letters, I mean, guys, like you're not running a business, like you're, you're, you're taking hours out of your day and doing a low level activity. You, you got to start thinking how to grow. 1000 percent dude 1000 percent i I, saw, I had somebody post uh, the other day somebody said like what happens to your roundtable events like well if i come there how are you going to teach me to do more deals i mean i still have to do the marketing i still have to do the negotiations i still have to go to the closing table i said dude nobody at my events does those things mm -hmm. right like it's for business owners mm -hmm. my events are for business owners if you're doing those things you don't belong at my event Exactly. And I wasn't saying it in a condescending way. I wasn't trying to be a dick. I really wasn't. Right. The fact of the matter is it's a different mindset from the people that are coming there. When I say come to my event to do more deals, I mean, come to my event to learn to stop to doing all that shit so that you can get to the next level, outsource, grow, scale, hire and stop doing the marketing, stop doing the negotiating, stop doing the going to closings. Right. I mean, how cool was that mindset shift for you and I when, when it was like, what do you mean? You know, oh, it was, like, it's, it was it's a, crazy. It was an absolute game changer. Joe, we just spent three, four days together in Florida last week. 
Uh, and I don't think the entire time we were hanging out, talking in our mastermind, did we ever talk about how to do a real estate deal, right? No, not, not anything about negotiation, hardly anything, if anything, about marketing, right? Nothing. Almost nothing about business. Uh, yeah. Almost nothing about business. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's insane that what goes on in those events are the opposite of what people think. But some of the biggest shifts ever happen within the events, right? So they're, they're really the antithesis of what people think going in. But there's still the biggest things actually occur within within that event, right? Hundred percent. I mean, I, these are some of the notes that I took just from a couple of days. I'm still reviewing them. I'm highlighting. I mean, none of it is like, yeah. hey, what list am I going to send next month, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, this is 100%. you know mindset. Uh, you know, how, some of the great things are. are we, do we want to be a magician or the mule, right? Like that's yeah. that's appropriate for for this conversation. Like, yeah. do you want to be a magician and run your business at a high level, see unbelievable growth? Or do you want to be the mule that's carrying 10 pounds of water on its back, doing all things to all parts of your business? It's a no-brainer. Correct. Very, very similar to the lighthouse and the tugboat, right? There you go. Yeah, it's amazing so, stuff. Dude, me and, you, me and you could probably do this, like, all afternoon. But, like, the reason that I wanted to get you on here, the whole concept of this podcast, particular podcast, is what I call the People Power or People Partners podcast, right? So I, I want to kind of like wrap a rope around this thing before we kind of go off in the left field because that's definitely what me and you are good at. Um, I don't know how many hours you and I have sat on, like on the back porch of a uh, uh, of a round table and uh, and had drank beer and done this like you know time and time again. But you know the focus of today's podcast again is, is people and power partners. Uh, I'm super passionate about this subject. You know, like I built my initial business and continue to train my people. Um, on this exact subject, and it's basically how to add value to others in order to leverage opportunities for yourself and others, right? Um, the whole concept of uh, building referral partners, building what I call power partners, uh, which is a little bit different than, than referral partners. And, um, and, and I kind of want to, if I could take a minute to kind of explain to the audience what I mean, and then maybe ask you some of the, some of the experiences that you've had that have helped you leverage your business, um, kind of take it from there, if that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, um, you know, I've done that. I've done, you know, a bunch of different, um, um, you know, uh, experiences on this before, and I've talked about this before. But, you know, bottom line for me is just a real quick background is, you know, Power Partners to me, the definition is um, you basically find people that are related to your industry. And for us, it's real estate, right? But, you know, every industry has their own little niche of a Power Partner. Um, so for us, it could be estate attorneys, or it could be someone in the senior community space, or it could be insurance providers, or it could be someone who works in the clean out space or anyone that actually can connect us with somebody that can sell a property, right? Someone that's in that transitioning phase that's looking to sell a property. And uh, long and short of it is what you want to do is you want to connect with that person, right? You want to take them out for coffee. You want to get them on the phone. You just want to figure out what's going on with their business. And in that quick 10 minute, 20 minute conversation, quick coffee, right? This is not lunch. I stress this, you know, hardcore because, this is not about wasting massive amounts of time. Um, I have a lot of respect for like, I think it's seller be sold. Grant Cardone talks about this. Um, you know, I got a lot of mixed, mixed opinions about that guy, but I love this one thing that he says, like he, he says like, you know, uh, in seller be sold, I think he says like, um, I'm not having lunch with you. I don't care who you are. Even if you're my mother, if I can't uh, sell something, you know, or, you know, if I, you know, if I can't close something, you know, I'm not going to lunch with you. Um, you know, I'm talking 20 minutes, meet somebody, and decide within 20 minutes that there's somebody you can do business with, right? And the way you do that is you don't go in there selling yourself. You go in there and you say, Matt, tell me about your business. Tell me about what it is that helps you tick. Tell me about how you do business. Tell me about the things that are important to you. And then before you wrap up the meeting, um, tell me about who I can connect you with that helps you thrive, right? Tell me about who I can put you in touch with. What type of people do you like to meet, right? Um, what type of other business people and professionals can I connect you with? And there's reasons for this, right? The reasons are this. I can't always make a direct connection or referral to you. Let's say you're an estate attorney. doesn't mean I'm going to run across old people all the time or I'm going to run across someone who's trying to uh, plan their estate or their will or their trust that I can directly refer an estate attorney to. But what I can do is maybe find out that that estate attorney is a really good fit for someone who runs a senior community, right? Now, I can make that connection in an easy way by throwing together an email. Hey, I love connecting with people in the senior community space, but well, that's easy for me. I'm gonna run back if I like you, I'm gonna throw together an email, 
And I'm going to say a state attorney meets senior community. I think you guys could be a good fit. I hope you do business in the future. And that's it. That's a power partner connection. Now, what's going to happen is a couple things. One is the estate attorney, if he ever gets a referral from the senior community, who are they going to think of first? They're going to think of Joe. I made that introduction, right? So those two are going to do business together. And every time they do business, they're going to think about who referred them, who, who initially made that connection, right? So now I basically made referrals happen without having to make referrals, right? right? And that's why I love the leverage of that relationship. Now, the next thing is, if either one of them have a referral that makes sense and they're in a conversation, they're gonna, who are they going to call? They're going to call Joe, right? So now it's a three-way conversation communication that I've made without really doing anything but sending an email and having a coffee. So that leverage, that communication, that, that partnership is something you can have time and time again. Now, the backup piece to that is you keep in touch with them. Now, when you call them, you say, hey, you got anybody that's a good fit for me? Anybody else I can put you in contact with? It's a very simple two-minute communication. Now, the off chance you ever get a referral from one of these people, all you got to do is take care of that referral. And if you do a good job, and if you're in our space, it's not hard to do a good job. Someone sends you someone that has to sell their house, you take care of them and you buy it, right? If you do a good job, you're going to continue to get repeat referrals. To me, that's a power partner. The way I create value is to help you meet other people that are going to help you multiply your business. And the way I get opportunity is eventually I'm going to see a lot of referrals come my way. This, this exact model has worked for me for years in my business, and it continues to. And it takes very little time. Because again, I'm not, I'm not meeting for lunch. I'm not meeting for dinner. I'm not, I'm not going to your birthday party, right? I literally got your business card and I met you one or two times. And if we continue to do business down the road, maybe we have coffee a few times, right? But the fact is, you know I'm there. You know I'm professional. You know I get the job done. And those are all the things that most people care about. Most professionals, all they care about is that you're good, mm. right? So I don't know if you have those kind of experiences. And I'm sure you have those kind of experiences, Matt, but maybe you can kind of you know, chime in on like some of the ways that those type of connections have helped you grow your business in the past. I mean, I know you have connections with investors, uh, private lenders, you know, other people that give you referrals, like some of those connections maybe that you've made through the years and some, some of the ways they've helped you grow. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm, I've just been busy taking notes right here, man. That was awesome. Thank you for... <laughs> <laughs> We're just here to add value, that, man. That was... That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah, hey, that's, I'm I'm busy over here trying to figure out how how I could take some of those those awesome uh, strategies and advice and and implement that, and th and that's the key, guys. I mean, we're always here learning. We're always trying to grow. That's why you know I love networking with with guys like Joe. I call Joe a friend now. We like he mentioned we've been networking and 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 masterminding together for going on about you know nineteen twenty months now, and it's been awesome because the just the the trajectory of my growth has gone, you know, through the roof and it's because we have high quality conversations. And, you know, when, when you hear something that Joe does in his business, I'm over here thinking about, man, like I need to step my game up because I'm not doing it enough. You know, I'll be the first to admit, you know, I, I was having this conversation earlier today and I was thinking about this, you know, out of like brute necessity, you know, I, I, I wanted, I built my business to be self sustainable meaning, you know, everything that we do is off of our own, you know, marketing, our own efforts, our own calls, our own, you know, connections, if you will. But, you know, another piece of the business that I need to, to, to improve on is that networking piece because it's so huge because mm -hmm. I know a lot of guys out there that do a, a fourth of the marketing that I do and get deals because they have great relationships they provide value and, and, and they can usually help. Now that doesn't say like, yes, I mean, I've built my business, my buyers, right? My buyers, I could, that, that's like the natural uh, answer to, to the question. The buyers that I've built um, relationships with have come over time um, because A, they're repeat buyers, B, they're professional investors and C, I can count on them. So when they say, it's a deal and they sign the, the, the agreement, I never have to think twice. It's never, hey, let me trade price on you. Hey, I, I'm not gonna show up to escrow or I'm not gonna deliver and, 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 and close this deal. And that has been humongous for me and any, any wholesaler out there, you know, your buyer's list is everything uh, because if you can't wholesale the deal to someone, then, you know, that's not good. You can't make money. 
But what I've sure. done over the years, Joe, is, you know, I, by nature, like I'm just a more, more of a, of a, of a giver as opposed to a taker. Um, and we've talked about, you know, kind of what the, you know, the breakdown of a, of a giver versus a taker. We all like to give gifts. We all like to, you know, say our thank yous and, and give credit where credit's due. You know, coming up in the business, you know, a lot of times I would, you know, have to give more back to make the deal work. I would have to give more of a credit. I would have to go the extra mile. I would have to take less of the, of the profit just to build that rapport, to build that relationship. Guys, like if you're trying to build a business and you're just a taker, you're, you're never going to get very far. And what I mean that by that is you, you don't need to make every single dollar. Okay. For an example, I'm building a relationship with a local investor. We've done probably a handful of deals already. On top of that, uh, he, we, we discussed that, uh, you know, for him, he doesn't want to build out the model that I've got going on where I build out a team. We've got a, you know, a, a kind of a conveyor belt, if you will, in deals that come through. Like that's not his model. Like he doesn't want to go out and hire acquisitions and dispositions and marketing by, by like his experience is to go to the auction and pick deals up there. Right. Like back in the day, there was a lot of deals. So it was very easy. Well, over the last several years, the auctions dried up. Right. So for me, you know, I don't need another cash buyer. I've got plenty of cash buyers, like just over time and experience, um, I could, you know, basically pick up the phone or send a few text messages out and my deals are sold. So rarely am I sending them to a list or I'm cold calling a new cash buyer. Um, but I knew this particular guy was the real deal. He's a real investor. He's got real money and, and he performs. So those are, those are strategic alliances that I want to find. So my point of the, of, of, of giving, right? So we just came across a deal in his particular market, right? And it's right in his wheelhouse. Well, unfortunately, we couldn't negotiate any further down on the price, which is 130,000. The seller won't budge. They're, you know, not as motivated to take a, a price reduction. That happens to be exactly what he would pay for that property, 130,000. So what I did, I said, look, uh, I called him up yesterday and I said, look, man, I got this deal. It's right in your backyard. This is exactly where you buy. This is exactly, you know, the avatar, if you will, of what sure. your ideal property is. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you this deal at zero. Okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to add on a grand. I'm not going to add on two grand. I'm not going to add on five grand. I'm not going to, you know, cry over a couple grand. He's like, wait, wait, are you sure? I'm like, listen, like you, you've been great to me. You, you bought several deals from me. And on top of that, he funded a rather large uh, deal for me as just a private lender where he gave me an amazing mm -hmm. interest rate. He's not an equity partner. He just said, yeah. look, man, if you, can, if you can shoot me deals that I can't get otherwise and it fits my model, I'll buy from, from you all day. And guess what? If I can kind of create maybe 10, 11, 12 deals from just you, Matt, then I could set aside, you know, a million bucks or more to lend back to you on a project that you want to do. Like, guys, like, oh my huge. God, I can't believe, I mean, I, I can't tell you how big that is to grow up our business. Right, Joe? I mean, you, you know, all about private money. Dude, you just said so many, so many cool things just now. I, I got, I got to digress for a second. Right. So let me take it back a minute. So, so first of all, you talked about the gifting. You talked about leaving things on the table. You talked about making it a win-win for everybody, right? These things are all, I, I hope the audience that's listening, especially the ones that are in business, that are, that are business owners or somehow working for themselves, these are all things, these are all value adds, right? So one of the biggest things about power partners and people, people partners and people leverage and creating opportunity for yourself, it starts with 100% and it goes all the way back to what I said at the very beginning, right? When you meet with somebody, my, one of my rules in the first meeting is I try to refuse to talk about myself, mm -hmm. Excellent. right? So I want to create as much value for the other person as humanly possible. Everything we've been saying since the beginning of this, po this podcast is try to create value for others. All the way up to and leading to the last thing you said, which is you give this guy a free deal, right? Yeah. It's, 
not only is it in our blood, it's an abundance philosophy and mentality and mindset that a lot of people have a hard time grasping because everybody's grasping on their last cent, their last dime, right? Their last nickel. They're like, I could never, why would I give this guy a deal, right? And this is the problem with a lot of businesses. They're all looking at their last dollar and saying, I want to hold on to that thing and I'm squeeze the life out of it, right? Exactly. When what they could be missing is the opportunity to have a million dollar lender on the other end because they did a quick deal with the guy and they gave him a, an opportunity to do a deal for free so that, I mean, how many deals has this guy done with you, right? Yeah. What is the opportunity for the future with him, yeah. right? So I always talk about value equals opportunity. It's the same thing with networking. You create value for somebody without knowing what the return could be, always first and foremost, right? Just give them a lead, give them a referral. It takes you 20 seconds to send an email. You never know where that's gonna take you. And I've been doing 100%. that for years with a lot of people. I get texts and emails all the time with people in my local sphere that have never sent me business. But you know they're good people, and you know one day they're gonna reach out and be like, Dude, my aunt's got to sell her house. Can you come over? It's a piece of crap. I really just need to sell it to a cash investor. Exactly. Dude, I'm your man. Exactly. It's been eight years, but I'm your man now. You know, like I will be there to create value for people because I know eventually the value we put out in the world is going to come back to us. That's the whole idea of what we do. Right, Matt? Dude, we're, we're always on the same level, Joe. That's why I, I just love talking with you. I was just thinking like wh what you put out to the universe is what you're going to get. It, it's it's yep. it's so true you know if i have no expectations right if i just want to help a buddy yep. out because i know that this would help him out i mean i put like i mean that's like a thirty thousand dollar phone call to him you know yep. he's gonna flip that property yeah. and make 30 grand that's awesome yeah i'm not sitting over there that dude's never right, gonna forget dude, i don't have my hand in his pocket like hey on the back end if you make x can you kick me back why and you know, hey, I need, you know, I need you to make sure that I get something in return because remember, I did this for you, right? Sure. It, it, it doesn't work like that, guys. It doesn't work like that. It's like out of my just, you know, generosity, if you will, and knowing that this guy is a, is a connection that I want to keep. I want to keep it a two-way street. He provides value to me. I provide value to him. That's all that at the end of the day, that's how you grow your business. It's not take, 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 and take, and maybe give out of, you know, guilt, right? Kind of that kind of stuff builds huge loyalty, man. That kind of stuff is where be the best relationships are built, right? That kind of stuff is where the, the, um, the, the best, um, what's the, the culture, it's a cultural fit, right? It's, it's long-term cultural fit and, 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 and continued support, right? Exactly. Like people like that don't leave you. No. Because they, they, people will say for 15 years, remember that thing Matt did for me? Like, dude, like, I, how could I leave him after that, right? Right. So, you know, giving back always has its merits. Giving, giving those type of things, the way you contribute to, to, to add value to the relationship that way is always going to have its merits, doing those type of things always. So it's awesome, man. It's awesome. So, you know, man, I mean, we've been, we've been doing this. Does anyone alive have any questions, any, anything to add about what's going on right now, what we're talking about, any other power partner questions, how you can actually um, leverage your relationships or any particular things about, you know, raising private money or doing deals. Great insight from great minds. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate your comments. Um, I meant to ask earlier, Amanda, is there any um, feedbacks from the, from the podcast that we should be reading off live? I think there was one or two from last week. I think Matt actually put one up. Not this Matt, another Matt. Matt, anything else you want to add? Yeah, guys. I mean, I, I just think a lot of great content here. Um, you know, especially in this time of the year. If you, any of you guys are out there and, and had a great year, an abundance year, think about how you could give back to someone that's less fortunate. You know what I mean? Like, I'm telling you again, not, not because this is why you do it because you want to do it, but you know, the universe does repay, you know, generosity and kindness. So we're, we're headed here in Christmas, Joe. I mean, I, we, we talk about it all the time. Like I just finished my best year ever in business. I, I'm so excited, Joe. I know you're killing it back there in Jersey. We always talk about how we can help a family, Joe. I know personally you've, you know, uh, hit us up in the group to, to help a family. I, I think that's awesome. I, I think that's just what, what it's all about. 
I'm looking to help a family. You know, I kind of threw it out there for Thanksgiving. I didn't hear back from anybody, but anybody watching this, anybody that can share this, hit me up uh, privately. If there's, I don't want any kids out there. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not a Tony Robbins. I can't feed the world. But if you know <laughs> some kids out there that aren't going to get a present, like, let me know. Let I'm sure Joe would probably want to know about that too. Guys, like, we, we, we're so thankful and blessed to be in this position that we're in that we need to give back. I want to give back. So please, uh, I'm, I'm extending this message. It could be totally anonymous, private. Hit me up, uh, private message me. Let me know if you know somewhere that uh, there's a family that needs something, anything. And I, I, I've got some money I want to want to give back and share and just uh, help a family in need. So I'm putting that out there, guys. Uh, I'm really looking to do that. So please let me know. Awesome, Matt. That's, that's fantastic. I appreciate you. Listen, I can also say, and I, I know I can speak for Matt when I say this, this podcast stays out there forever. So I don't care when you're listening to this. It's, I don't care what time of year it is. It could be July, August, September. Um, you hear this and you hear anybody that's in need, please reach out to us because um, we're, we're consistently looking uh, for families to help. We're consistently looking for um, opportunities for truly, truly people that are in need, truly people that need help. Um, you know, don't send me your GoFundMe link that's fake and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, if it's somebody that's within uh, reach of somebody else that we know and we can verify that it's not fake and so on and so forth, um, you know, don't uh, don't inundate me with uh, crazy fake stuff. But, you know, the truth is that uh, um, the, the mastermind, uh, the DM family and, as, 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 and, and the uh, inner circle family, my mastermind, uh, we're always looking for opportunities to give back. And uh, we do a lot of that stuff incognito. Matt, you weren't supposed to bring all that up, but we do a lot of that stuff uh incognito and a lot of people don't don't uh, don't know about it um but the fact is if you're listening to this i don't care when it is um you know hit us up matt where can people uh, reach you matt i know you do events as well you got anything coming up uh, anything scheduled right now uh nothing in the books but we're going to be looking to do something you know the the first uh, first quarter next year so i'll definitely keep um my uh posts out there and, and some videos to let people know we've got another event coming up um probably first quarter Okay. And where can people reach you that are, that are listening? Yeah. To the Facebook, podcast? uh, I, Matt, uh, and Guyana Garabedian is where you guys could reach me, private message me or email Matt, M A T T at fast cash closer.com fast cash closer.com. Awesome. Matt. Well, I appreciate you joining us. Uh, everyone else that's on the call as well. Everyone that's watching live on Facebook, as you guys know, uh, we have an event coming up, the Roundtables, live and full effect again in South Jersey. It's coming January 3rd and 4th. We're down to, what, four tickets, man? Four tickets left, uh, available. It's a 5K buy-in. you got to be ready to invest in yourself. It's for business owners only. And uh, January 3rd and 4th, we got something big happening on the January, is it 3rd? I keep messing this up. January 3rd, uh, we're doing something interesting we've never done before. Uh, it's a surprise, but it's going to be pretty wild. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh January 3rd, we're going to be doing something cool. Four tickets left. If you guys are interested, you've been on the fence, uh, if you've been thinking about it, I'd love to uh, I'd love to talk to you about it. And if you think it's a good fit, hit me up. Just uh, PM me on Facebook. Uh, if you're watching this, most likely you're already friends with me on Facebook. So, Matt, thanks again, man. I appreciate you having, having you on. Thank and, you, uh, Folks, if you're watching this, share it with your friends. Get it out there if you found value in it. I'd love to uh, be able to, uh, to pass this on to some other folks. So thanks again for watching. Thanks again, Matt. Appreciate you, man. Merry Christmas. Yeah, you too, bro.